final of the lightweight women's single skulls, won for the past two years by Switzerland's Pamela Weishaupt, and before her by Dutch star and Olympic champion Marit van Oypen. Over in lane one, America's Julie Nichols, fourth two years ago and hoping to emulate Sarah Garner, the last US sculler to win this 13 years ago in Egg Ballet. Next, Sweden's Sarah Carlson from fashionable Stromstedt, fourth in this year's Europeans and inspired inevitably by yesterday's incredible single skulls victory of teammate Frida Svensson. In three, 23-year-old Louise Ailing from Invercargill, who really grafted through the New Zealand winter to regain her place in the Kiwi elite squad. Next, a Mary Louise Dreger, who just yesterday stroked the German lightweight quad to gold and is now looking to add this world title to her European crown. To her left, last year's world silver medalist, Italy's Laura Milani from Milan, runner-up to Mary Louise in this season's Europeans. And closest to you, Fabiana Beltrami from Brazil's high-life city of Floripa, more relevantly third, less than five seconds behind Mary Louise on the Rotze last July. Well, all the scholars uh, got off almost in unison there. I think Traeger actually on the second and third strokes. He managed to pull a little bit out on Louise Ailey next to her. What a fantastic tribute to her recovery between the quadruple skulls race yesterday. You see Traeger there. She looks so good, really locking on low down as she accelerates that uh, yellow end pack of shell away. And a brilliant start for her. Let's have a look at the, uh, the wide shot as we see. Yeah, well, half a length already, David. Well, I just wonder, Martin, whether she was looking at Frida Svensson's video from yesterday from the heavyweight single skulls because Draga with more than half a length over Louise Ailing. And what I have to say are the best conditions of the week. A little bit of headwind, but other than that, perfect. They are beautiful conditions. Looking at the Kiwi sculler, Louise Ailing, she's had a look for Draga there. I think the big difference you'll see between these two scullers is how much Draga lets the boat run as she comes out to the front stop. She's a little bit longer in her stroke length than Ailing. Ailing is very direct and very punchy, but it's the extra length that Draga's got which really takes her out. On the near side, you've got uh, Beltrami from Brazil. He was third to Draga in the Lucerne Regatta on the Roots. A pretty experienced uh, Beltrami. Yeah, Beltrami, she's got all those experiences in heavyweight women's singles. She's raced in Beijing, she's raced in Athens, been out of her depth in those events, got through on the continental qualification. I think this is really her kind of event, lightweight women's singles. Unfortunately, it's not an Olympic event, but in third place at the moment. So closest to you, Beltrami, then two away in the blue for Italy. That's Milani who's trailing. Then we get to Draga, Ailing, Sarah Carlson on the far side, Julie Nichols for the United States. But it's all about 29-year-old Mary Louise Draga from Lübeck and Rostock, who, coming to the end of the first quarter, has got open water and heading for that second gold medal already. It's hard to see with a sculler of that class how anyone is going to catch the bow of uh, number four. Uh, Draga, coached by uh, Angie Nowak, who was a competitor here herself when the championships were lost on uh, Lake Catapiro in 1978. Uh, just amazing dynamism. I mean, she's so long, she's so fluid, David. Yeah, she's pretty well got a length over Louise Ailing. Louise, who struggled in the early part of the year to get into the squad for Europe. In fact, she didn't make it and then really worked with Donald McDonald throughout the New Zealand winter and this is her reward, a chance now to go for a world championship medal. Well it is and she was great in the first seat, she beat uh, Miliani and Beltrami to uh, take that first seat, go straight through to the final but at the moment, uh, though she finished in the same time as, as Draga, she's not in the same race, uh, well nobody's in the same race as Draga, looking at Miliani there, but uh, Draga's well out in front of her, 35 strokes a minute, Draga's down at 32 and a half. Yeah, Milani, who I think I said was runner-up to Drake, actually she was third in Portugal. But she has quickened up, as you can see here, and got herself a little bit more in the race there, certainly with Ailing, but she was some 10 seconds behind Drager in Portugal at the European. So on paper, at least, she's got quite a lot to do, but she is pushing in towards the silver medal, and Beltrami also toughing it out on the near side. I would think uh, Louise Ailing, in terms of her performance, has got to worry. She uh, led her heat all the way through, very strong through the uh, third and the second 500 metres. But so far, she's let the Brazilian and the Italian get away from her. That's an awful lot of work to do if she is going to challenge for a silver or bronze medal. So we were looking for some magic, some fireworks from Louise Ailing as the Carapiro raw comes into effect in the last half of the race. 
this is the end of the first 1,000 metres, and you can see Drago's pulled out even more on the near side. Beltrami having a great fight there with Milani at the moment for silver and bronze. Louise Ailing in fourth place there, and uh, Sarah Carlson and Julie Nichols of Sweden and the United States. I'm afraid they're out of this. And there is uh, Louise Ailing on the far side there, still very steady. And Drago, well, it's just a procession. It is a procession if you look at it from the front. Uh, here's Drago. I really, really like the way she's locked on. I think it uses those big muscles in her lower back and her, and her legs just getting the glutes locked on to make that boat smoothly sink through the water. Well, she absolutely is a class act. I mean, already in her career, world champion in 2003-2005 in the lightweight double, so close to a medal in Beijing. But she is leading this, and it's going to be really hard to catch her now. It's all, I think, Martin, about the silver and bronze. Milani in the blue of Italy, ailing there for New Zealand. And you can just see the bow on the left-hand side there of uh, Beltrami of Brazil. It would be good if Brazil could get a medal. Absolutely brilliant, and uh, just reward, I think, for a real trooper in terms of the sport in the service. But uh, ailing there, while she's not got the same length forward as Drago, she's had another look at Milani there. She is very, very dynamic, and this is her territory in the third 500 metres. She expects the roar to the crowd to add something to her, and at the moment she's kept a very high stroke rate, very high cadence of striking. Not the longest sculler, but she's very dynamic, and that is going to give us something, I think, a platform to move on from. Yeah, Laura Milani through the second quarter, very much the quickest, 156.41, ahead even of Mary-Louise Drago, but she's so much in command now. And just uh, reflecting on the uh, Brazilian as we come to the last quarter of the race, uh, twice she's represented her country in the Olympic Games in the single skulls. Not quite out of this, as you can see. She's right on the near side, and there it is, Italy in silver, Brazil in bronze, Louise Ailing. This is where she really has to find something in this last 500 metres, but surely this is going to be a second gold medal for Mary Louise Drago. Drago's going to be enjoying it, but you know, one argument says that she should be here in a double skull in the boat. She's going to try and make it for the London Olympic Games, but uh, at the moment she's just focused on the race and uh, Ailing, well, what a dynamic uh, surge through. Another look across. She's going for that bronze medal if she can make it from Milani, probably through the Brazilian at this stage, maybe. Yeah, Milani, who's been so near to a gold medal on many occasions, both at European standard and also under 23s, but now getting taken on to a left and to a right. Beltrami in the foreground for Brazil, then Milani, then on the far side, Luis Ailing. And now Luis Ailing, she's going to get this roar of the Kiwi crowd, which seems to count for a matter of length. Beltrami's just desperately hanging on there with the last 250 metres to go. I think Milani's kept her form very well. It's going to be really hard for Ailing to get through, but every stroke there's just a centimetre of the game there. And the crowd, they are on their feet trying to lift Luis Ailing and lifting her. They are, because Ailing is coming up now to Laura Milani, and they are bound to bow. Drago going for gold with Luis Ailing. Well, she's not quite there. She's almost there. Now she's there in silver. Milani's doing ever so well, but she's got to find something extra. Ailing beats her in the heat. Will she beat her again in the final? Milani answers her and Beltrami. Beltrami, fantastic, trying to raise the game there. Side New Zealand in the middle, it's Italy. Closest to you is Brazil. Drake is almost at the line. She gets the gold. Who gets the silver? Who gets the bronze? It's Ailey who gets the silver. Milani the bronze. Beltrami just a whisker behind. What a race! Yeah, what a fantastic race. Maybe fantastic two races. Well, three as we see Sweden and America cross the line. Drag around in front. She was on her own. Tremendous performance. Shakes her fist there. A great uh, performance with Angie Nowak and coach. Ever so pleased. Now she's got to find a double skulls partner. But Louise Ailing, really class act to come through and take that silver and bronze race ahead of Milani, the Italian. Shane, the Brazilian, was out of it. So, a second gold medal for the fast-starting Mary Louise Drager. Louise Ailing lifted by the home crowd, swooshing first past Fabiana Beltrami of Brazil, and then Laura Milani of Italy in a last quarter of 155.44 to earn herself the silver medal. For
Murray-Louise even after such a successful campaign down under here in Carapira.